Hello everyone, this is Lisa Cronin from It's the Little Things in Card Making and I am going to share my biggest secret. Die cutting is one of my favorite things to do. So actually I have a few favorite things. Die cutting is one, uh, painting or inking backgrounds is the other, and foiling is another. Uh, and we can add the pens to the foiling as well. Well, I've been die cutting for a long time and I've struggled in the beginning um, when dyes started becoming a little bit more intricate, things were a little more difficult to cut, and I had to kind of figure my way around things. And every time they came out with a new product to help with die cutting, of course, I bought it. So, we're going to start off with what I found in my die cutting stash. Okay. So this, um, I have several die cutting machines, but I'm going to talk about um, the Big Shot. Uh, that's my manual machine that I use the most. So they came out with a, uh, what do they call it? They call it a Solo Thin Die Adapter. And I never used it. And then... They said, well, that's not really working out so good. So then they gave us a metal plate, which I do use. I do use the metal plate, but I use it differently. Then, since that wasn't really working out and the dies were becoming even more intricate, they came out with this precision base plate. Now, this plate works. However, it wasn't working the way they wanted it to work. The, let me get a look now. Make sure this is the right one. It is. Okay. So what they wanted you to do is they wanted you to place your die down on this kind of soft surface. And that would allow the die edges to go through and, and cut your paper. But I think what was happening was the precision base plate it it couldn't be adjusted so a lot of dies were starting to buckle we all know how expensive dies are so they kind of figured okay I guess we can have and they were kind of on the right track with this precision base plate but because everyone's dies are different everyone's machines are different it just didn't, you know, this is like a uniformed plate. This is going to be a long kind of talking video, but I think it's going to be so worth it by the time I'm done. So they decided, okay, this, this isn't the best thing either. So then they went to this, and I can't even find it. This is a chrome precision base plate. And it's chrome on the top. There's no give to it. And... It's supposed to cut intricate dies. Now, over the years, I've gotten several machines, and I started noticing some things, and then, you know, common sense kind of kicked in, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, every video I've ever seen, any person I've ever spoken to that die cuts, when they're having a problem die cutting an image or, um, die cutting through the paper you know we're told to shim it so we would put our plate down then our paper down then our die down and we were told to shim it from the top and then put our top plate on and I started thinking that doesn't really make any sense because what we're doing is we're putting the paper down on a somewhat hard surface that cutting plate that that plastic cutting plate well there is some give, which is why it marks up so badly, but it doesn't give much give. And then we're shimming the top of our die and putting the top plate on, and what are we actually doing? What we're doing is we're taking that die, we're pressing it into that plastic acrylic cutting plate, so we're kind of damaging the plate and 
we're not really, you know, it, it is helpful, but there's a better way. And I figured out the better way. When you shim, if you need to shim, shim from the bottom, not from the top. And this is good for several different techniques in, in several ways. And the reason why I'm bringing this out is because I'm going to be doing a video and I'm using this technique and I thought I should explain it. Um, so when you see it, you know what I'm doing. So what I, what I do when, when I do any kind of die cutting is I shim it on the bottom. And again, there's variables here. I try to use a soft paper and I try to use a paper that's very smooth. 65 pound paper, nothing heavier than that. And again, you have to play, you have to know your machines, you have to know what plates you're using. So, you know, it's all trial and error and it's all, you know, what works best for you. This is what's worked best for me for a long time. I haven't had to buy any more shims. Plus the fact that I'm buying bottom plates, cutting plates, less often because I'm not ruining my plates. I'm not really allowing my dye to penetrate into my paper and get into that bottom cutting plate. It does a little bit, don't get me wrong, but not so much as it does without shimming the bottom. By shimming the bottom, you're not only gonna get a better cut, but you're not gonna have to replace your plates so often either. So what I've done now, and I, you know, I try to do my guy die cutting and everything off, you know, offline, but, and again, you got to remember the kind of paper that you're using. Um, I die cut this image. Uh, the die, I have a die, I have paper in here, but it's this image here. And there's a lot of little spaces. This is really, you know, kind of intricate. And what a pain in the neck to try to get these pieces out of the die. When you, so what I do is I put a bottom piece in, 65 pounds, so I mean away. I put that down. I put the paper down I want to cut. And this is a background that I created. So again, when you're using paper that's been wet or inked or painted on, the, you're, you're kind of changing the structure of the paper. So in this case, when I put this through my die cutting machine, typically on a good piece of paper that hasn't been compromised like this, you, when you take your die cut out, you will have all your remaining bits, all your cuts on your shim piece that was on the bottom. And that also leaves very little to have to punch out of the negative and very little to punch out of the die. So it saves time, it saves money, and it really is a lot of fun. And it's neater and it's cleaner and you don't have all of these pieces all over the place. So what I did was I took 65 pound Nina Solo White and I'm gonna grab a piece. Then I put my card stock down or whatever I wanna cut this is also a background that I created. Then I put the, the die on top. And then I put my top plate on. Now, something this intricate, I would use the metal shim underneath my cutting plate. And still, I'm saving my cutting plate. I'm not tearing into it. I'm not allowing those edges of each die to sink into that cutting plate as much. I mean, it does happen, but not as much, not as deep. Um, when I take this off, and I, what I did was I put through another one, so you can see. When I take this off, or when I take the die off, typically what's going to happen is I'm going to have this emptied, and my shim piece that I put underneath is going to have all my bits. So very little punching out of the holes, but there's, you have to be really delicate when you do it. You have to remember that, you know, these are pieces of paper that are going to fall out 
and you just got to be gentle and ginger when you're taking the dye off of what you've cut so this works brilliantly with double-sided tape and this is great for inlays and this is how I do my inlays and I tell you the truth I have so much fun doing inlays I actually make like a kind of a little bet with myself how many of those die cuts can I get to adhere to my bottom shin shim piece of paper so I I made a card a while ago and it's this card here and I use the same thought process um, these colored uh, butterflies and, and different things they were from a background that I made and I put the double sided tape, tape underneath that background I put it on top of my paper shim and I put it through the die cutting machine now this is the technique that I'm going to be doing on my next card so I wanted to, to kind of show you how it looks what I did and I'm going to show you when I open this up how much easier it is to do inlay cutting. Um, I did this as well. Now this was layering a couple of pieces of heavy, heavy cardstock. I can go as little as I want. These little dots are all uniform. They're all the same size. Nuba dots, drops, they're good. You know, they're okay. This is, this is wonderful. So, I am now going to open this up and we're going to see exactly how many of these cuts stay in the die and how many of these cuts, and I'm using my handy dandy toothpick here, and how many of these cuts are going to be connected to the bottom plate. And all I'm doing is I had taped it down, I took the tape off, and you can kind of see where you have to grab it the edge of, of the die cut so you can start pulling it out very gently and you can actually see the pieces around it start to release through the holes now this does take a little finesse I'm not gonna say it doesn't but it is so cool when this happens and again I make a little bet with myself how how clean can I make this come out and if I see that I'm pulling the paper and I'm not seeing a release in the holes, I'll just kind of give it a little bit of a tug. And eventually I'll go around the edge, see what my thumb is doing? I'm going around the edge and I'm just kind of helping it release from the die. I don't want to lose my spot here. Now, I know I said there's no poking, but to me, you know, it, this is so worth it. And oftentimes, you don't even have to do this. This is because I have the double stick um, tape in there. So it, it does make the dye a little grimy, which is why it's being a little stubborn. If I feel that um, it needs a little help, I have no problem helping it out. But you'll see what I'm talking about. And you know what? You've probably done this and didn't realize that this could be helpful. Because um, I did this for a while, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, this is a, kind of a better way to do things. So, it's coming out. And because, like I said, it was one of my backgrounds, it's a little drier than a fresh piece of paper which is maybe that's what I should have done. But you're going to see me do this technique in future videos, so you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and how, how much easier it is to do dry cutting this way. Okay. 
So here are all my cuts. Not all. There's a couple in the die, but still. I mean, look how many cuts this gives you. And now, look at what you have to work with here. And they're already adhered from the bottom. They're already adhered. They, you know, once I put it through, so when I do my inlaying, all I gotta do is place it down. It really is so much fun. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take these out, but I, I kinda want them to stay where they should stay. This way if I'm looking for a particular size or if I'm looking for a particular image, I don't have to, you know, look on my desk. Everything is in here. Um, you know, I, we talked about the Nouveau Drops and, you know, people love them and that's great. Um, I like uniformity. I like all my circles to be the same. I don't want to worry about them crushing in the mail. Um, so I make my own. And that's a lot of fun, too. And you'll see that in the next video as well. So I took as many as I could out. And because this has an ad adhesive on it, it's being a little stubborn coming out. But this was so much easier and so much better than um, doing it without the shim. So all I'm doing is putting them back in place. And to me, it's neater. I, my, you know, I, I have, I mean, I still have stuff on the floor of my craft room, but um, it is a lot neater. And I have a dog, and she loves paper, so I have to really be careful what I do and what falls down on the floor. And this one is probably like right around here. And I love the fact that I can take a toothpick, my handy dandy toothpick, and I can just kind of you know, work it without too much effort. And here's a little flower stuck to my hand. Now, I do this shimming on the bottom and you could see, I'm hoping you can see, you can see the impression the dye made, but it didn't go through. It didn't go through to my plate. So my plate didn't get all marred and scratched up. Um, I try to do this with every cut unless it's a very, very simple cut. Um, because I want to save my plates. I don't want to have to buy new plates if I don't have to. And this saves me so much time. I'm really hoping that um, you're going to try this and you're going to see how absolutely incredible it is when you have an intricate die and you find that most of your pieces either stuck in your paper shim or in the paper that you die cut. Because these are these are all, um, it's, it's not like it didn't go through. It went through. I mean, I could pick up, let me use this for now. I can pick up this butterfly and it's completely cut. See, that was I in frame. So I'll do it again with this one. I can pick up this butterfly. It's completely cut. And it has the adhesive on it. So, in essence, I made this whole piece of paper a sticker, but I also cut all my images out of it without ruining my, my, my plate underneath and without having a huge mess uh, on the floor or on my desk. And I'm just going to put them back because I do, I do a lot of um, embellishments with a lot of these pieces that I don't necessarily use for the project that I'm working on. What I try to do is save them, and I will show you how I do that um, in my next video. So this is like my big secret. This makes things a little easier for me to work with, and sometimes I have to die cut quite a bit. I'm telling you, this is so much easier. I'd love for you to try it. Let me know what you think. Um, again, there are variables here. Try to use paper that hasn't been compromised, that has no watercoloring, has no inking on it. 
you'll you will get a better result it will stay on your paper bottom shim better um yeah let me know let me know i think this saves so much so much time and some money too so that's it for this video i will be back with another and i'm making a card using this technique so you'll see that in the works and um thank you again for all your support thank you for your comments your thumbs up and you know share this video if you think it's helpful to someone else and by all means thanks for stopping in and remember it's the little things in card making okay have a great day bye now